Okay, so we're going to try to create the very first basic parts of the stair. Now we're going to use the box for that and we're going to copy the box. Now we're gonna do this in, in, in a few steps. First of all just take this note and put it on this side uh, and you will see later why it's more convenient. Now we're gonna do or we're gonna take for that a copy node. So press tab, type in copy, just like that, and we can put it over here. Okay, connect it to the very first port. Now if you want to see if you have multiple ports what they're for, you can go to such a port, you see it highlighted, and also press middle mouse buttons. So you see primitives to copy. Over here, template to copy to. This is something we're going to use later. Now first, let's have a look at this. So, we have just one copy and what we can do with this copy, we can just make multiple copies and as you can see with the numbers you see over here you see that we're adding much more objects. Now if we transform you see it says over here transform cumulative cumulative. Ah. So, moving up and now it's just for each copy adding 0 0.1 on top of that but it accumulates so copy 1 has this one time, copy 2 has this value two times and so on until you have this whole bunch. So you can move this into the directions that you want to move it something like this and like that you have a very simple stair. Uh, other things that you can also change uh, cumulative like is uh, for example the scaling. So if we would make it smaller you see that each time it gets scaled smaller and smaller and smaller. Just simple things like that. Alright, but what we want to do is something more complex. We want to make sure that we can use the line that we have over here in combination with the copying to create all those stairs. So there are a few things that we need to do. First of all, we need to make sure that we're going to add the points that we need to make copies from. So what the copy node is doing, if it's taking in a template node, it is using all the vertices there are to copy the shape onto. So again, let's switch off number of copies, let's set this value to 1 and let's have all default values over here, just like that. So now uh, the thing that we're going to add is over here a resample node. And the resample node is going to redivide this whole line. So press tab, resample. And if we see the result over here, you see it suddenly changed this whole thing. Now there are a whole set of uh, things that you can adjust over here. Now, at all times, it is very important to work the following way. Um, if you want to know how these things work or what they're for, then use the help file. It's not by just playing around with each one of these values that you're going to know what the result is going to be. Because, for example, over here, level of detail, you can play with this value whatever you want, but unless you understand what it's for, you don't know when to apply it and what kind of effect it's going to have. So on a straight line it's not going to have any effect whatsoever. And if you don't know that, and if you're just playing around with it, yeah, you've learned nothing. So make sure sometimes to use, or in almost all cases, to use the help file. And on the help file it gives you like lots and lots of uh, info. Also it gives you example files that you can check out, etc. So use this. Oops. Alright. 
So what we have now over here is this line being divided in several parts. So if we move this, you see it's keeping an equal length division for each one of these. So I'm going to change this. We're now moving this around. Let's, let me put this somewhere in half. Now, as you can see, the last part is not added. In fact, the line is longer than what you see over here. Let's do this again. Let's make it just a little bit longer. Then we see it much better. You see the difference in, in size. Okay, one thing that we're interested in is, for example, maintain the last vertex. So right now, if you start to move, it's always keeping the last point as well. Um, some other things, you can adjust the length, how long the division needs to be for each one of these lines, or you can set, for example, the maximum number of segments that you say, I want to have like 10 segments, and then it's just divided over the whole edge. But then, if you change, you see it's not adjusting the numbers. So there's a lot of possibilities that you can do over here, just with simple resampling of this node. Okay, um, so now the thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the result we have over here to put into the copy node, like that. And as you can see right now, it's just creating a copy for each one of those points. So there you have it. Okay, um, let me just play around with this. Now, if you start to rotate, as you can see, this is not really stable. We want to improve this. The reason why this is not stable is the same reason um, that if you don't have any information, for example, to uh, aim at an object because the, the effect you're seeing over here is very comparable to um, what would happen to an aim constraint in Maya if it's not provided with the proper data. So Houdini is, a f is doing the following thing. It is using um, one axis as uh, a normal and it's using or it's using the aim axis, sorry, it's using the aim axis um, to, and it aligns it with the normal of this object, but it doesn't have any normals, and it needs also an attribute which is an up vector. So let me just throw this on screen. So just like the aim constraint in Maya, if you want to have an object aiming at a certain point, let's say over here, you need to have this point to aim at and you need to have, for example, an up vector. An up vector which makes sure that the orientation along this axis is going to be correct. So this is exactly the same principle. So now what we're going to do is first create some normals. And the normals that we're going to use are the ones which are going to stand straight up in the sky. Straight up. So for that we're going to create an attribute. Okay, now I'm going a little bit fast perhaps, but don't worry. Create an attribute. Now, attributes um, are something which are all over in Houdini. Almost everything is working with attributes. And let's explain it as the following, uh, very roughly, because also I'm going to go much deeper into that. Every element, whether it is a point or whether it is a primitive or an object, can contain attributes. It has default attributes and it has attributes you can add. 
the default attributes or for example the position in case of points. A point without position attributes cannot exist because it doesn't know what the position in space would be so that's a default attribute. Now an extra at attribute could be for example color. So a point could have not only a position but could have also a color on top of that. That's an extra attribute. You can also add a normal which is also on top of then the position and the color an extra attribute. But you can also create your own attributes with, with their own names in which you store all kinds of values derived from all various things. Now this is really important to remember. And attributes can be used by yourself in a specific way or are sometimes used uh, for uh, notes. So, sometimes notes they do have their own specific attributes that they can use. So if the object being used provides these attributes, the copy node will react in a different way. Now let's start with the following. We have over here an attribute and I'm going to template view the, the stairs over here. I make it template view is over here of the ping button. Just click it and then we see the template of that. So I'm going to add a normal attribute and the name for the normal which you can use immediately is N, capital N. And the type is a vector. And a vector is always three numbers. So by default the values are zero, but what I'm going to make of it is a value of one. So if you're going to look at the uh, at it right now. You can see we have over here these lines pointing upwards. These are normals. They didn't exist before, they exist after the creation of the attribute. Now as you can see these stairs are more stable but are not doing exactly what we want. So if we just turn around you see we have much more stability, they're not flipping around in all kinds of directions but they're not properly oriented. So one of the things that we need to change is the following. So this over here, the up, should be the z function or the z direction. So in this case our box is aiming with this set in this direction. So in order to make sure that it is flat, if we look back to this part over here and we know that the normals are pointing upwards, we have to make sure that Z is the top part of this object over here. So let's change this as well. What we're going to do is we go to the box and we're gonna use a transform node. Oops type transform and I'm gonna change, I'm gonna rotate over the x-axis, you can see it over here because it's red and we're gonna rotate it for 90 degrees so now we have a box which has in the z-direction as you can see over here uh, the top part so let's check it out now and as you can see, now these planks do have a proper orientation. So let's go back to this control and let's move this around. So this is already much better. So we can have a stair which works in this direction, but as we can see it, it doesn't work in this direction. So this is still something we need to fix. And this is something we're going to fix with the up direction. And for that we're going to use right here the actual direction of the line itself. Now for that just follow me. Um, we're going to use a polyframe. So at polyframe and a polyframe can calculate the tangent so tangent is uh, the, the connection or the, the, 
the perpendicular, not the perpendicular line, the perpendicular on the perpendicular line. Yeah, it's called a tangent. Uh, let me just draw it. It's perhaps a bit easier. A tangent is if you have, for example, a circle. It's the line, not normal. Not normal. Ah, I can't draw straight over here because my tablet is not working that good anymore. And right over here, this line. This is the tangent. So the one which is just following exactly the surface at a given point. Alright, now let's calculate the tangent. But we're going to give it a totally different name. Instead of naming it to tangent u, we're going to name it and give it the name up. And from the moment we use up and connect it over here in the copy, you see now we have the combination of those allowing it, us to orient it in the proper direction. Now just don't worry too much if you don't understand it yet. We're not, I'm not going to explain everything because then uh, we're going to be busy for hours. This is just something to show you that you know how to orient your stairs for now. And as you can see, now everything is just working fine, it's very stable, it's very fast. Exactly what we want to have. Right, um, so this concludes this uh, step in which we used the copy node in two ways, creating copies by hand or creating copies using a template object and we added for the first time attributes to this object. Now remember also, like I've shown before, that if you want to check problems or whether things work, you can also check with middle mouse button if things has, uh, have happened. So we added one point attribute, which is normal, something which wasn't there before, as you can see right over here, and here we added another one normal, up, and there's another one called normal. You can just remove it. Ah, it's just, it's still over there. Well, let's keep it as what it is. Nor, null. But we're not using this one. Okay, so that's it. Um, let's go to the next one, and in the next one what we're going to do is we're going to extend what we have over here on the stairs and we're going to make sure that we can create uh, over here some side borders and that we can add some that we can add some rails